All right, so uh, hi, uh, Andreo. Thank you so much for coming uh, and talking to me about your latest paper. Um, so first off, can you just give us a little bit of, of a background um, to who you are and, and what you've been working on? Okay, um, well, hi, I'm a biologist and I uh, conclude my master and PhD in physiology and pharmacology in, in Brazil while I was there. Uh, and then I came here to work at the Translational Research in Respiratory Medicine uh, in Yeda. And I work in currently, I'm, I'm a postdoctoral, postdoctoral researcher of Siberian respiratory diseases. And I work at the Biomedical Research Institute, Institute of Yeda. So the background of, uh, in terms of research line was always uh, related with the uh, sleep and circadian health uh, under different uh, contexts such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, obstructive sleep apnea, COVID-19 more recently, and, and uh, critical illness. All of, all of the research is, is uh, related with sleep and circadian health in, under just different contexts. Great, well, that leads us on very nicely to this paper. So as you say, this is looking at COVID patients and importantly, it was those who had had a critical sort of very serious illness for, from COVID and it ended up in the ICU. Uh, and then you were looking at their sleep and circadian patterns, three and six months. This latest paper is looking at the six months, but you've also looked at three months. Yeah. Um, and so I was really impressed that you'd managed to recruit 145 or patients um, was this a hard population to recruit? That seems like quite a lot of people to to follow, following on from a, a critical illness. Yeah, actually, it's difficult. But I have to mention that we uh, it was we were able to do so with the incredible help that we have uh, of medical doctors, nurses, technicians, and we are like um, our the structure of a research group. Uh, facilitates this this recruitment because we do have uh, all of these professionals working at both hospitals that we uh, uh, collaborate with, with Hospital Arnaud de Villanova and Hospital Santa Maria. And then we have also people at the Biomedical Research Institute of Vieda. So all of this structure and these different uh, professionals with different backgrounds uh, do do facilitate uh, this recruitment. And also we collaborated a lot with uh, the intensive care department of both hospitals to recruit the, the patients. Great, well, it was a, it was a great job. Um, okay, so can you just then tell us a little bit about what you've sort of been looking at within this population? Okay, the main objective of our study was to perform more sort of a descript descriptive analysis at first uh, during the three and six months follow-up, because uh, what we saw was that there was uh, the, this kind of studies were scarce in the liter literature, uh, especially when you consider validated questionnaires and objective tools to evaluate the sleep and circadian health. So our intention was to uh, to show that to to measure this uh, more objectively and also with validated questionnaires. Um, and then uh, we recruited the patients at the, during the ICU stay and followed the patients for three and six months after hospital discharge. In this uh, two med medical visits, we evaluated the sleep with a Petersburg sleep quality index, upward sleepness scale, and also uh, with the seven days of uh, echography. Um, we observed at the six month follow-up uh, that almost half of the population present with uh, poor sleep quality, according to the Petersburg, and uh, the objective analysis confirmed this, these evaluations. And also we observed a, a high variability in terms of fragmentation of the rest activity rhythm among our population. We also performed uh, additional analysis uh, to observe whether these patients uh, were improving or not uh, comparing the two, two follow-ups, the two medical visits. And uh, we observed that the, there was a slight improvement in terms of sleep quality among these patients. And uh, there was no difference in terms of the rest activity rhythm. Other analyses also to predict 
to to observe whether there were variables to predict uh, the sleep in circadian health at six months follow up. Uh, show us that, um, for example, the BMI could predict the the sleep quality in the fragmentation of the rhythm and the six month follow up, and uh, also some characteristics related to the hospitalization, such as uh, time uh, in, in, in the hospital, uh, ICU stay duration the, of, of the ICU stay, and also the use of invasive mechanical ventilation could predict a higher fragmentation of the rhythm at a six months follow up. And finally, just to observe whether we could uh, have a correlation among different outcomes of COVID-19, we observed that there was also a positive relationship between sleep and circadian health and uh, symptom signs of anxiety and depression. Okay, wow, well, that's like a very comprehensive uh, <laughs> a set of assessments um, and analyses. So I guess I, this, something I was just wondering about is I've, I've read a little bit of research that people's sleep and circadian rhythms can be disrupted from ICU stays sort of uh, before COVID and before the pandemic. So do you think there's something that might be more related to that or specific to COVID or a combination of the two potentially? Yeah, it's important to highlight that at our design of these studies, with the design of this study, we can we cannot um, conclude, uh, have any conclusion in this regard. But uh, also uh, we know that the ICU environment is, is detrimental to, to sleep and circadian health due to the constant artificial light exposure, the lack of sunlight exposure, the noise and interruptions uh, during the night. So, and also we observe that these variables can predict uh, a higher fragmentation of the rhythm. So I would say that, um, that there could be causality in this regard um, in terms of the time in the ICU and uh, user invasive mechanical ventilation, for example. But we cannot exclude a possible causality in terms of the disease itself, because uh, there's a close relationship between the immune function and, and the uh, sleep in mm -hmm. circadian health. So it's, pro it's possible, it's possible that um, a, a patient with uh, disrupted sleep in circadian health uh, have more susceptibility to, to COVID-19 or to its severity and also in the, in the other way in, in which that severity of the disease could have lead to a higher um, sleep in circadian alterations. But yeah. of course, we cannot confirm with this design of this study. Yeah, okay. No, that's that's really interesting. So um, do you have plans for more follow-ups or is this sort of um, as far as we're going with this population? Yeah, we do. And actually we are, uh, at the moment, we are uh, performing the analysis hmm. uh, related with the one year follow-up in the patients. And we are evaluating patients uh, who are already in their um, two-year follow-up. Oh, wow. Okay. And we, we do uh, um, want to continue this research line in terms of critical illness and sleep and circadian health among these patients, which are uh, like a, an exploratory field and a very interesting one. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, it sounds really interesting. And I look forward to uh, seeing the next papers and the next follow-ups. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much for going through that with us. And uh, yeah, good luck with the next uh, studies. Thank you to you to, for the opportunity to, to show a little bit of our research. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks.